Good morning, everybody. Thank you for tuning in to a long-awaited episode of Alliance of the Sacred Sons Development. Uh, my name is Steve. I'm the lead developer of Alliance of the Sacred Sons. And I just first off, I want to apologize. It's been so long between videos. Um, I've actually been doing quite a bit of development, as you may have seen in the release notes. Uh, one thing I'm not so great at is, is uh, promotion. So if I have the choice between talking about a game and working on a game, I'm probably going to be working on the game. So, But uh, I hope you're excited by what you see. Um, we're going to release in about two weeks, so a little bit before Christmas. Um, I went back and forth. We may end up uh, releasing just after Christmas, just after the holidays. Um, you know, this is not a game that is going to be on anybody's wish list, you know, at, at Target or, or Apple or anything like that. So, you know, I'm not too worried about missing the holiday season, so to speak. But uh, we're pretty close. What you're going to see, uh, most of what is going to be in the initial release is already in the game. Um, there's just a few things that we're going to be adding. So let's just go ahead and get to it. This is going to be like a Let's Play. So I'm going to kind of explain some of the concepts. I'm going to assume that this is for people that have never played either Imperia or seen Alliance of the Sacred Sons. Um, so I'm going to be, for some people, this may be a little bit redundant. But I want to make sure that people understand what Alliance of the Sacred Sons is all about and how it differs from a normal 4X game, because obviously there are a lot of differences, and that's why we call it a 5X. So we're going to go ahead and start a new reign. So the first thing you're going to do is set up your galaxy size. So we have small, medium, or large. I usually go large. Um, right now there's no other civilizations. You can actually add them, uh, but they don't really do anything. They just kind of sit there. Um, we do the empire size and light years. So this is essentially how large a sphere that your empire can be initially. In other words, that's a sphere that they look for planets and look for uh, colonized systems. So I like to keep it around 20,000. It goes up to 20. Uh, I like to keep it around 18.5. No civilizations. There'll be more options to set this up later as we get more into the uh, development of the game. So the culture is the next step, and this is a very important part because this determines several things about your uh, reign. First of all, it's going to be your culture, which gives you certain bonuses. Um, cultures are better at things than others. Uh, they have certain ideas. Uh, that means they're more or less tolerant of factors within the game. And also determines what houses are more likely to be friendly with you. That's very important, as we'll talk about later. So Neo-American is a pretty basic one. This is kind of the generic, uh, what would happen if America continued on in sort of a broken society a la Fallout type uh, look. Then we have traditionalists. This is kind of your church tradition. Um, you know, what would happen if the church essentially took over. Uh, and then we have the Technic, uh, a little bit of uh, the Matrix going on. Um, this is a very highly futuristic development society insofar as uh, society and technology have come in the future of Alliance of the Sacred Sons. And then we have Mercantile. Uh, this is kind of the Venetian uh, trade empire reborn. Uh, Gilded Worlds, and this is a little bit of it more interesting. This is kind of a, uh, what if an entire civilization took an extended acid trip and lived in, in decadence? And it, it's a very interesting uh, culture. I, I have to give all of our hand on this one. This is a very creative uh, culture. And then Spartic, and this is kind of what if Rome had come back, or Sparta. Um, very, uh, very war-driven, uh, very um, imperialist, and very... Uh, uh, you know, rigid, I guess I should say. So I like to start with, when I'm doing this, Neo-American, because it's the easiest. These are the culture primary ideas. Now there's uh, 11 different ideas that cultures can have, and they range on a scale from 1 to 10. And these are very important because these drive essentially what populations, pops, who are part of a culture, because every pop has a culture, will do in certain situations. For example, I'll just use this body purism, um, and this isn't really so far in the game yet, uh, tolerance is probably a good one. Tolerance is the ability to integrate and work with other cultures. One's complete disdain and hatred for other cultures, while ten is a melting pot of tolerance. It will be well suited to polycultural plants and systems. So that's going to be important when you have multicultures on one planet. Uh, there's a game mechanic called tension, and if you have two uh, cultures that violently hate each other and have low tolerance and have diametrically opposing views, there's a very good chance that they're going to clash, uh, and that's going to lead to possible unrest. Could lead to possible riots, could definitely lead to lowered productivity. Um, it's a situation you want to avoid if possible. So you want to put, try and, and put cultures together that are uh, somewhat compatible. So um, 
and the associated houses, Hawken, House Hawken, House Horlock, these are the two great houses that also are predominantly neo American culture. So we'll go ahead and leave it like that. So now we're going to set up the house. Not a whole lot going on here yet. Um, we'll call this uh, Hawkstorm. Um, Harkonnen seemed a little bit derivative. So we're going to go with red and blue. A lot of this is not in the game yet. Uh, I'm not too, I've been working primarily on the function over form. Uh, but eventually you'll be able to select your multi symbol, choose the background, colors, and you'll actually have a house crest that uh, relates to that. And so finally we go to the emperor creation. So this is also pretty unchanged from what's before. We'll keep it, uh, well, well, Stevonius, sure. Stevonius Hawkstorm the first. You always take the name of your house. And we'll go with this guy. He always reminds me of the guy in uh, Star Trek Nemesis. I don't know if you have seen that, but uh, he kind of looks like young Picard. All right. So we're going to go ahead and start. Now, one thing we've worked on quite a bit is turn generation. The game actually generates about five to ten turns uh, beforehand um, to kind of generate a little bit of history and a little bit of migration and kind of build up. There's nothing like Dwarf Fortress, so no, there's going to be no thousand year uh, consolidated history or anything like that. But it is a way to kind of hit the ground running. Um, because remember, you're not starting from a single planet. Uh, out in the middle of nowhere, you're starting from a fully developed, albeit decaying empire, uh, more more like Crusader Kings or Europa Universalis. So that's that. Nope. Quit. Quit telling me that. That's really annoying. Anyway. Anyway. So I refuse to upgrade to Windows until I absolutely have to. So in another probably 15 seconds or so, we'll go ahead and see the game and. Uh, Mainly what we're going to do, I'm going to go through about five or six turns and just kind of show off some of the different uh, uh, mechanics of the game and how they interrelate with each other. And also kind of let you know what is going to be added before the first release, which again will be in a few weeks. It will be $7.99 that will be available on our website. Uh, we will not be going to Steam for quite a while. Um, it's been discussed, but too many good games have gone by the wayside because otherwise good games have been ripped apart because they had things that just weren't quite ready. And I don't want that to happen to this game I've been working on for several years and a lot of times been put into it by a lot of people. So we really want to be ready. All right, so here is your empire. So let's kind of zoom in a little bit. So you see we've got, uh, it looks like we're settled on two two constellations. So the constellation Enosis and Pratika. Um, so you can only have one province. So everything is kind of bottom up. So you have planets, you have systems, you have provinces. So provinces are like countries of a sort. And you can only have one province per uh, civilization in each constellation. So in order to expand, you actually have to take over more constellations, which as there's more con more uh, civilizations out here, could be a little bit more difficult. So we zoom out, we see, you know, there's quite a bit out there, um, but right now the civilizations have not been defined. So first thing I like to look at when I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do is I look at my, um, well, actually I look at my house. Let's, let's take a look and, oh wow, well that's kind of unusual. They all hate me. So even the ones that, the ones now, that, no, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. There, are there are 10 great houses, including yours is 11, but there's 10 uh, bespoke great houses, but only five of them are in the game at any given time. So you may have five completely different houses uh, in, in any one game. So the houses that are normally Horlock and Hawken, that are normally friendly to me, they did not come up in this game. So I have five houses that are basically pissed off at me. Um, this means that we're, we're essentially right. So that means a lot of things. First of all, it means that most of their characters will not be available to me. I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, if I need uh, viceroys, or if I need uh, governors, or if I need people on projects, um, more likely than not, they are not going to um, to work with me. It also means what that also means is, for instance, in Barwan, they have a very high merchant skill. That's what the top hat means. So if I want to boost my trade. Normally, I would put a viceroy or system governor in who was really good at trade because their uh, tradition levels are kind of a skill uh, that gets passed on to the pops under their auspice, and they get better and they have better uh, efficiency at what they do. But since they hate me, there's a very low chance that any of them will work for me. 
of you know Mila. Here is someone with um, mining experience, 65. It's very good. So one of the things you run into early is you run out of energy very quickly and minerals because projects cost a lot of energy and minerals. So I want to put people from Miloc into my plants, especially my high mineral plants, high energy plants. Well, uh, they're not going to work for me, so I have to kind of work to get them on my good side. So that, the big part of the game is trying to figure out what relationships that you're going to uh, culture. You can't get everybody to like you because houses have their own relationships. Um, before the first release of the game, that there will be a screen showing you all the house relationships with each other. Um, of course, you can always do the enemy of my enemy of my friend type of thing. But there are, there are numerous ways to uh, improve a house's standing. You'll actually be able to negotiate with the house leader to negotiate for a better standing. So uh, the standings are war, rival, neutral, friends, and allies. So there's five different levels, and you have to negotiate for each one. Uh, so in effect, it's a little bit like a forex diplomacy, um, but you're dealing directly with. It's not a treaty per se. It's just saying I want to have normalized relations with you, either for better or for worse. And those things will allow you to do more. And we'll kind of talk about that. So the next thing I like to look at is my what we call my logistical range. So these are logistical networks. These allow my ships, um, my colonizers, to go anywhere within this blue area. I can build projects that are stellar based. So in other words, I can colonize, I can build mines, um, my people can colonize between this area, they can go between these systems. So you'll notice up here, they can't go because there is no logistical station. So this is probably something I need to build soon because without logistical station, POPs cannot go between these plants. They can only go um, you know, between systems and plants. So, the next thing I like to look at is my uh, energy levels. So we have 18,100. Now this is my stockpile. So this is energy, this is basic materials, which are pretty much used for everything. These are heavy materials, which are mainly used for space-based projects. And then we have rare materials, which aren't used very much, but they're used primarily for scientific projects and, and uh, military which we do not have a lot of yet in this game. So, um, so I, then I take a look at my power. So remember we talked about the house power. So the house power is here. Um, you can see bar one has a 361 power. Now power is derived from a lot of things. It's derived from holdings, derived from the uh, value of those holdings. It's derived from the characters that are in that house, their abilities, their holdings, their wealth, um, their, in, their inherent power, So which is kind of their resource network. Um, and so, with me, I am essentially the head of my house, so but my power is only 209. That's actually very low. You want your power to be as high as possible. You can actually force people. The, 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 whole, the whole conceit of the game, and this is why it's very important, you are the emperor, and that's great. But you do not have absolute power. This is not a typical 4X where I just go in and say, hey, let's go build a, here, let's go here, let's go into this planet, Zernitria, let's build something. Well, I may or may not be able to do that. In a normal 4X game, you click on it, you say, build a mine, it takes four turns, and it's done. And maybe you can drag in some pops, and maybe you can make some farmers into workers, or scientists into workers, and make it go a little faster. Maybe you can put a little more money towards it. But that's pretty much about it. So uh, Alliance of the Sacred Sons takes a completely different tack. The people in the game are real, and that's something that I really wanted to sort of get across. Is you know, Even in games like Crusader Kings, I never really felt a connection to a lot of my people. They don't talk. They don't really, you know, the events kind of flavor some things out. But I always felt like you could do more. I wish I got to know those characters a little bit better. So one thing in Alliance you really want to try to do is um, give you more of a relationship. So there's a lot fewer characters than there would be in a game like uh, Crusader Kings, but they have a lot more depth to them. All right. So what I'm going to do. So my power is pretty low. So how do I how do I gain power? Well, great question. The more you do for your people, and the more you do for your houses, the more power you will have, which means you have to create projects and actions that will gain power. The biggest way of doing that is pretty much like in any 4X, you expand and you exploit and you explore. So I'm going to put an early emphasis on expanding so I can give some of these houses, probably some of these lower houses, 
uh, a little bit more power and hopefully win them over to my side because I need some allies. You cannot win the game. If your houses look like this, you're going to lose. There's no doubt about it. You need some allies. So I'm going to take a look around and I'm going to look at my... So I have... This is kind of getting started. These are my own planets. As you can see, I don't have a whole lot of them. Um, this is going to be added quite a bit to... Um, there's going to be uh, economic... This is the economic view. There's also going to be the demographic view. The, uh, the uh, economic, I'm sorry, the political view and the overview. So uh, we have own, but I want to take a look at the unowned planets. I want to take a look and see what what are some options for colonization. So this is the bio, and this is from zero to 100. And it can be modified by planet traits. Basically, the higher to 100, uh, the more it can be colonized. And uh, I'll show you in a minute how regions come into play. It kind of gives you an idea of what you might expect. <coughs> but this is sort of an overview. And there'll be sorting mechanisms for this too. Uh, I just haven't done a lot with it yet. So I don't see a whole lot of really great planets. Um, now I do see quite a few high energy planets and high mineral planets. So these here, when you see a hundred, that usually means gas giant, which are not colonizable because they have a, a any any uh, colonize of zero means you can't colonize them. Uh, although there'll be some technology later that you can do that. So here's a pretty decent planet. It's a low bio, but it's got 65 energy, which is pretty good. Energy run out of pretty quickly. Um, pretty good basic materials, really good uh, heavy, which means that that's what we need to explore. And that's pretty good for rare. Anything over 20 is really good. So let's take a closer look at Cadmus. Um, so it's it's uh, Cadmus 2. I'm sorry, Cadmus. Uh, yeah, Cadmus 2. So it's a, a desert planet. Interesting. So it's got strong magnetic field and heavy metals. So that means traits kind of further define a planet. So that generally means that uh, with the heavy metals, that means that's going to be a big plus, and that's why you see an 85 here, 65 here, 21 here, because that's good. So let's take a look at, and this is the region detail map. So this will kind of give you an idea of, of what you can do. Um, and you can kind of look, so it's primarily, of course, being a desert planet, it's mostly desert. And this is kind of the start of an idea. Um, all planets have regions, so there's a lot of detail that goes below the surface. And planets are made up of anywhere from 4 to 30 regions. And each region is individually generated. It has its own population, it has its own infrastructure, it has its own um, you know, mineral, uh, energy content, bio content, etc. So this will come into play very heavily when uh, warfare, because you will actually be able to fight on planets, and you will be able to fight region by region. So uh, if you concentrate a lot of your infrastructure and, and building in one specific region, a planet that's otherwise a good planet um, might lose a lot of its uh, power uh, because you took out the capital or you took out a, a major manufacturing area. But anyway, so we have one uninhabitable terrain. So we have means 9 out of 10 regions. So the potential development is 27 levels. So each level of development, so you can uh, build a mine, you can develop academies, you can develop uh, government structures, you can develop factories, farms, and, um, and of course, uh, uh, military factories. So each level, it's not one building. Remember, we're thinking on a planetary scale. This is basically an entire uh, industry level buildup. So you're talking maybe you know, thousands of buildings and thousands of uh, structures uh, built as a unit would constitute one additional level of development. So, this planet is a pretty small planet, so it contains up to 27, and right now there's no infrastructure, so the, the, the bio is only 27. So I have to build infrastructure for it to be able to contain population, which I can do. So I think what I'm going to do just to kind of show you, first of all, I want to see where this planet's located. So it's it's over here. So it's within, as you can see, it's within the, um, it's not within logistical range, which means I'm actually not going to be able to build on it. If I try to do it, I'm not going to be able to do it because guess what? It's not in any logistical station range, which means I can't get my colonizers out there, I can't get my support ships out there. Um, and again, when I look at logistical range, this is not one station. I know it'll say build logistical station, but it's more about a supply network that you build throughout this region, and it kind of constitutes, you know, fueling depots, things like that. So if I want to do that, then I have to build a logistical station, which I can actually do here. 
Um, now, you can build a logistical station. That is something that you can build on a planet that is already active. So this is my uh, provincial capital. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Now, I only have two action points. This is another very major um, concept of Alliance of the Sacred Sons. You cannot do everything as the Emperor. Again, in any other 4X game, you have unlimited actions per turn. You can colonize 10 planets and you know, uh, you know conquer 20 stars and, and do it all before breakfast. Well, you can't do that here. You're one person. Uh, you're 18 years old. You just started your majority. So you have to... Basically, basically learn the ropes, learn of, government. ropes of government. So you start so out with low action, low action points. This is also a way to kind of expand, expand as you're able to do more as your empire grows. Um, it kind of simulates you learning more and being able to do more. And your action points do increase over time. So we're going to go ahead and create a project. We're going to build and expand logistical station. So over here, this shows the cost. So it's going to cost 100 uh, admin ADM. Um, five, you know, billion credits, uh, 500 uh, basic materials, 750 heavy materials, 20 rare materials, and 1,000 energy. So it's not insignificant considering we only have 18,000 for the Empire. Uh, all all uh, projects come from the Empire store, so that's why trade networks are important. You're trying to get all those all that uh, to the Empire Center, which is Neo Cyrus. So we're going to go ahead and do that, so we're going to click on it, and this brings us to the uh, project screen. So, another huge difference in Alliance of the Sacred Sun. Again, you take a typical 4X, you click on farm, you hit one, two, or however many you want to build, you're done. No, that's not how it works. There are actual characters within the game that actually do all the building for you. Well, they don't do all the building, but they, they organize it and contract it out, etc. So the idea is, the whole game revolves around who has power and who doesn't. So, if I have a character that I'm sponsoring, say, and you, and you can follow, a big part of this game is actually taking characters and kind of nursing them through the ranks, um, and, and of course uh, building their careers so that they can become loyal to you, because you need a cadre of loyal people, just like you need a cadre of loyal houses um, to work with you uh, as you continue to grow. So, we're going to look at, on the planet, so first we need to select some houses. So here, red uh, means they hate me, blue is me, and that means they're allies, well obviously I'm allies myself, so I'm going to pick myself, and these are the minor houses. So there's four minor houses, um, not going to really focus on them too much for this walkthrough, they are going to be more important. Minor houses can become great houses, uh, it's kind of like uh, uh, in soccer, how you can be promoted and, and demoted. Um, that can happen. In fact, that's one way of getting rid of a troublesome house is taking away their power and uh, sort of propping up a minor house to take their place. So, anyway, so we're going to use, um, since we need probably some good leader, we're going to use Barwan and Lee. So, go ahead and see. So, on the planet, um, we've got Furia Cook, that's the system governor, she's mine. Um, we've got Francisca Hernandez, who's the planetary viceroy, and then a courtier. So we have courtiers, are basically uh, characters of note who are um, in your empire, and they are uh, unique. They have special talents, they have special ability to uh, you know, admin, etc., etc. Now, she has an incredibly high skill level. I actually rewrote this so you wouldn't see, you know, people with skill levels of seven or eight right out of that. The um, admin skill is very, very, very important. When I click on her, so this basically. Uh, determines how much admin that you can get out of a plan. Admin allows you to build projects. So when I go here and I say I need 100 ADM to complete this project, I have to get that from this number here. So the system governor can provide 73 admin base of that because she has a skill level of 2. So her base admin is only 49. So that's what she can get out of it. But because she has a skill level of 2, she can get slightly more out of that. Um, and also, as the system governor, she's pulling in the admin from the planets under her. So you build a network. The system governor has, you know, five uh, planets that are all developed, and they're all providing admin. Then she is actually able to consolidate that. And that's important because you can only have a very finite number of people on any given project. And you will run out of characters that are competent very quickly, especially with the no-serve um, um, mechanic that I'll show you shortly. So the first thing we want to do is we need an administrator. So the administrator is determined by skill level, and then this is their effect. So Sophia has a skill level of 5, which means if I bring her as an administrator, we can add 5 characters to this project, which is huge, because characters provide both money 
they pay for these projects out of their own pocket, their own treasuries, and uh, they provide the admin necessary to complete the project. Now, just so you know, admin is kind of a overarching concept. So admin, you know, this is the, what they bring to the table. So only governors, you know, viceroy, system province governors, uh, they have this because they're using the resources of their planets, of their systems. Uh, it's sort of an amalgamation of ships, men, materials, technology, fuel, and 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 so all that's kind of amalgamated into a number. And that number represents both how much of it they have under their command, which is the base admin of a planet or system, and how efficient they are at getting the most out of those materials and resources and that represents their skill. So it is definitely possible to have a, a, the skill five or six like this person here. If I put them on a planet with a base 100 admin, they might be able to get 150 out of it. And so it's very important. These people are very, very rare. And so you can bet I'm going to be, in fact, I'm going to make her a person of interest. I'm going to follow her career. This lets me uh, look her up specifically uh, when I star this um, so I can kind of focus on her for different things. So, however, I don't want to use her as the administrator. And the reason for that is um, she gives me 51 admin, and she's going to be able to fund most of the things. So administrators cannot use admin, nor can they fund. So if you, if you use someone that's high skill, keep in mind you can't use any of their money or admin. So at this point, the only people that have shown up that is being available are people from this. That means basically that there may be people from the houses on the planet, but they're not willing to help me, so I won't see them. Um, so what I'm going to do is, you see by the way the little star showing like that, and then of course I have the filter that will only filter people of interest. So I'm going to go ahead and expand my search. I'm going to go ahead and expand to the province. So I'm going to see if there's anyone with a higher admin effect. So no, so skill two, skill five, skill three. Now, here's someone that I might want to use. It's someone in my, my um, House, Hawkstorm. Because remember, when you do projects, this is how characters gain power. Power individually. Um, and I'll just kind of show you. So right now she has a power of 57. That's her base power. That's what she has accumulated throughout the years. That's by her as Dent as being system governor of a fairly small system, obviously, or this would be a lot higher. This plus seven represents what she's accrued since she took that post. So this could be favors she's done for other characters. It could be things for the house. Uh, projects are the biggest way of adding to that. Um, so if you have someone that you're trying to kind of build up their power base, so right now we're friends, which is the highest tier relationship. So I want to help her out. I'm actually also going to tag her. Um, and I'm going to want to kind of push her career. So you know what? I'm going to make her the administrator. So by making her the administrator, that gives her, see this plus 10 here, administrators automatically get half the power of any project. Um, actually, and, and, and so do you as the emperor. You get a fraction of the power as well. And this is how we talked about how you grow your power. This is one way of doing it. This is your people seeing that you are doing things for them. Um, now, we talk about ethical rating. Um, this will come into play when we talk about fear of love. This is a greatly benevolent. This is something I need to update. The uh, projects actually all do have ethical ratings, but this doesn't update yet because it's pretty new. But this will show you whether essentially your people will see it as something that, that they will love and that will increase your popular support love, or whether they see it as something that is detrimental to them and they will see it as something that is more fearful. So um, power is 20. That's the amount of total power that can be gotten from the project. Um, ADM, this is the base amount of admin required to complete the project. And then this is the Empire contribution. We talked about that on the tooltip. This is what the Empire is contributing from their Empire stores to complete the project. And then these are your contributors. Um, and you drag and drop them into here. And you'll see the uh, amount of admin and the, the amount of funds. Uh, and then the estimated terms to complete. So let's go ahead and let's make this simple. Um, let's make our system governor a cadmus since we're friends. Um, we're just going to keep it that way. Now, I have my, I'm married, this is my wife. I could uh, suck up to my wife, but she's not going to help me very much, admin wise. So I want to get this done quickly. Um, there's no one here that would I hate except for, here's someone from Neelock that actually is willing to work with me. So that might be, let's take a look at this first. Huh, it's a courtier. So he's of extremely low power. He may have a, his family may have some uh, connections to give him some kind of power. But most courtiers have no power at all. Um, but he's got a decent admin skill. You know, two is okay. Starting out, three is good. Five is like, whoa, that's amazing. Um, doesn't have very much money. 
but when we look at his talents and his traits to look and see whether this would be someone worth sort of grooming. Um, so we have emotions, motives, and talents. So emotions, caution is used uh, for the AI when they start determining what they're going to do. A high amount of caution means they're going to be more cautious in changes in goals. Also, when they're a governor uh, or a viceroy, cautious about uh, making trades uh, when they don't have a lot of, of, of uh, materials. Passion, um, very, very passionate character. Um, will tend to have more events that have to deal with passion and foolish, rash decisions. Um, drive, low. Now, this is more about how often they change their goals. Each uh, character, when their AI starts to kick in, they'll have a series of short and long-term goals that determine what they're trying to do within the game. People with low drive will have less uh, action points, essentially, to uh, move towards those goals. That represents their lack of... Um, basically, they're lazy, <laughs> for lack of a better word, and uh, they're not very willing to change their goals. So, doesn't really make you, until the AI kicks in, these don't really do much. Uh, motives now, piety does matter, uh, especially when we add the uh, religion uh, uh, mechanic. Uh, now, the ones that really matter are empathy and honor. So, empathy is very important when you're putting in a vice or so your people want to be led by someone that they feel like cares about. So if they have a high empathy, they're going to have a higher love rating. They're going to be more likely to attract people to their planet. They're going to be more likely to pick build plans that reflect their people's needs instead of their own needs. And um, they're going to slightly help your uh, fear drop because it shows, hey, I put someone in charge that has high empathy. They care about my people. Um, your, your, your pops will see that and give you a little bit of credit. And then, of course, honor. Honor is very important in two ways. Uh, if uh, And see, his honor is average. So if he had a low honor, uh, if he had a high honor, he probably would not be showing up here because uh, he would probably want to stay with his great house. Uh, he feels that honor towards his house not to help me out. So uh, he would uh, show that. But an average honor, uh, will they take bribes? Uh, will they help with projects? Um, you know, how willing are they to go along with things? Um, you know, will they go along with their house, basically? So if it's low, there's a pretty good chance they will, they, they will break with their house. And then you have your talents. Charm is also very, very important right now when it comes to viceroys because you want, you know, these are politicians at the end of the day, and you want a charming person. Um, charming, very charming uh, viceroys and system governors and province governors are way more likely to attract pops uh, through migration. Um, intellect, uh, low intellect. Now, this is going to be very important. This affects kind of their starting stats, how quickly they advance. Uh, also, the kind of decisions, the, the quality of decisions that they make. Uh, with regard to their goals. So it's a good way to go about things and a bad way to go about. So this person is kind of stupid. So he is not going to advance very much. This administrator skill will probably never go up uh, or go up very, very slowly. Um, you know, his internal uh, uh, talents will probably never really go up that much. Uh, and then, of course, uh, the discretion. This is kind of coming more into play uh, when the intel system comes in. Uh, you will be able to talk to this person since he has low discretion, and you'll probably be able to find out secrets about other characters. Secrets are a major part of the intel system uh, that will be added um, in either the next or the one after um, update. So, and then traits secretive, uh, they have low discretion, but they're secretive about their own. So it's harder to get intel. Uh, that's why he's modern intel. Uh, oh, and intel level is important. This, the more you talk to a character, the more you learn about them. Uh, when you have low intel, these either show up as high or low, and then they become more average, high, low, and the colors start to mean more the more intel you get on a character um, to get a better sense of, of who they are. And also, you get to know more traits about them. So, technophobe, um, this person hates science. Uh, you would probably not put this person on a planet with mainly techniques because the techniques will probably revolt and leave the planet. And those are the kind of things that you have to look for. You can't just plop in any old character onto a planet. You got to look at the culture of the planet. You got to look at what the planet is building and doing. Is it a mining planet? Is it a factory planet? Is it a, a, a capital with a lot of admin? Is it kind of a multicultural? Um, there's a lot that kind of comes into play, and that's a big part of why Alliance is different, is it's not just a matter of plugging in a person with the highest stats, because this person could have high stats, but could utterly destroy your planet within 10 years because everyone moves off, or they riot, or they revolt, and so you have to look at the knock-on effects. Anyway, so this is probably not someone I'm going to bother with, um, kind of grooming. I'm just going to kind of let him be. All right, so we're just going to make it easy. We're just going to move over. 
this person. So now we have over, um, because we have 92, but we have 113% administrator effect. So we actually have enough admin to execute. And then, of course, they pay for this out of their own pocket. So Furia is going to get 20 power out of this project um, because she's paying the full cost. Let's just say for that, just for the sake of that, I had Sophia, let's say Crispina. She's paying 58%. So right now she's the only one there. But if I bring her in too, then they're splitting the power because they're contributing different amounts. Crispina has less money. She's contributing less. But this is one way of kind of uh, balancing out power. You, if you're in a situation where you have... You know, the only people that are willing to fund the project are people from houses that you prefer not be more powerful. This is one way to kind of spread that out. So I don't want to do that, though, because um, I want this to be done quickly. So we'll go ahead and put them in. Uh, and actually, I need, I need a little bit more. You know what? I do need a little bit more. Uh, I don't want it to be two turns. I want it to be one turn. So let's see if any of the other houses are willing to chip in. And let's go ahead and sort by admin. <laughs> well, let's go to the empire then. So you'll notice these are in red. So when a, when a uh, color is in green, this is also an important idea. So when you have a project and you have the characters within that chain, that's a lot more efficient than if I'm having to bring in chips and material and resources from outside that constellation. So they're only going to be able. This person is the system governor of Neo Cyrus. Well, Neo Cyrus is, is way far away. Um, from this, um, from this constellation. So, whereas they would normally have uh, 141 admin, they're only able to contribute 28. Even though we're friends, they're doing all they can, but they're so far away, it's just not efficient. And so, it's very important to build these ADM chains. If you plan on developing a region, a constellation, it's very important to have admin bases there uh, because it is extremely inefficient to bring in characters from other parts of the of the empire and that's um, so that that's one thing to really focus on is building that good logistical network of, of admin so um, but since I don't really have any other good options uh, I'll go ahead and use Crispina she's the planetary viceroy in Terra. see even New Terra. New Terra, this is your freaking capital but again only 10 uh, ADM this is with us being friends the lower the relationship, the lower this gets, and the lower the uh, efficiency gets, because they're less willing to work hard for you, basically. So let's go ahead and plug her in. Say so now we have one turn. They've equally split because they're both willing to contribute 100% of the of the cost. So now they're each basically contributing 2.5. So let's go ahead and execute. So you'll see it's in here. So you see I'm now out of action points. So now I can't I can't even open this because it's insufficient action points. So we're gonna go ahead and let that go. Um, this will give us a chance to get the show you the uh, trade system. It takes one turn right now for the trade system to kind of fire up. That's something I'm working on. Um, be able to show you a few other things. So, um, a whole lot to this game. There's so many things that you can do. Even as early as the game is in development, there's still a tremendous amount that you can do uh, and kind of play with. Because remember, you want your popular support. If it ever drops below 20%, you lose. Uh, and if it ever drops goes above 80%, you win. So, all right. So let's take first of all. There's our logistical station that we just built. So now we can colonize the planet. Now you see, I got seven action points. When you have fewer action points in one given turn, you tend to have a little bit more the next turn. You also saw my power went up because I built a logistical station, which is seen as um, generally a good thing. So right now, we're taking a look at the military command mode, which really there's not the military system yet. But just to kind of show you, this is the predominant culture of the star. Name of the planet, province that it belongs to, population, and this is the base admin that that system has. So this is kind of a good way of looking quickly. You know, if you're looking to build a project, well, Cornelio has 46 admins, so um, this is something you may want to build up. So we go to the economic command mode. Whoops. We go to the economic command mode. So we've written about this before. So basically, the way the economic works is you have a province uh, trade hub. So these province, these trade hubs belong to this particular province. Um, now you have two different kinds of trades. You have um, profit trades, which are reflected by this white uh, ship. This is from system to system, planet to planet, um, where they're making money for themselves because they're trading because they're short of goods. And then you have supply trades, which are trades that go between pro um, secondary hubs to province hubs, and the province hubs send their stuff to Neo Cyrus. 
Well, 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 we got a problem. So this province hub is owned by Milak, who hates us, which means they're not going to trade with us unless I make them trade. Well, as you can see, my energy levels are going down quite a bit, about 500 per turn, give or take. Now, I had a project last turn that didn't help. So I can't keep that going on forever. I do have a small surplus in materials, and I'm not using any rare, but I really need to start getting some uh, energy. So I need to talk to the system governor, and I need to go ahead and open up. And this is now where we get into actions. These are things that you directly, uh, directly control. Uh, now, he is willing to work with me. See if I can find someone that's uh, okay. Yeah, here we go. So this is the will not serve. So if you see this no on here, the little Ghostbuster symbol, this means they will not um, serve in any capacity uh, beyond what they're already doing. And if they're already in a capacity, which is Provenzo, which he was there before I, I came to the throne, um, he's not going to provide any um, support for projects. So that's why you will not see him uh, for pride, which is a shame because he's a very powerful character. Um, so this is probably someone that I need to kind of try and keep on my good side. And we're neutral, and that's fine. But you see, he's got a high honor. And so since he's honorable, he's going to do the right thing. His house hates me, so he's going to fall in the line, especially because he's a senior member. So this is probably someone else I want to keep an eye on. Anyway, so I need to ask the system governor to, let's go ahead and shake this loose. So we go to assignment actions. So we're going to demand the empire trade. Okay. So again, very simple. Um, for the good of the Celestial Empire, I require that you send your trades goods to our capital. Well, and I can confirm, and also on a lot of actions, you'll get to choose things. We'll kind of show you that in a minute. So we're going to try to confirm the action. Okay, so this kind of shows you, and I'm working on a UI to kind of give you some idea of how they might respond without giving you all the numbers. But they're going to obey 325 in the calculations, defy 128, this is higher, so they're going to obey. And you see it's kind of close. So they're going to go ahead and open that up. That means next turn, um, they're going to go ahead and ship goods to me directly. So a big part of this game is developing trade networks as well. So I know that since I'm running low on energy, I have a negative energy. If you look at Neo Cyrus, um, this is not the capital world of most Forexes. This is more like sort of the Trantor and Coruscant, where they're taking up. It's all about the admin. So you look, energy is minus 172 by itself. Very few build points. Uh, this is mainly about the admin. So that's the model we chose to take, where you basically have a overwrought empire, um, where the capital planet is all about admin, and you have to kind of support it. So if you think about Foundation, you think about how they talk about Trantor having those 20 worlds uh, to kind of support you know the one planet, kind of like that. So you you have to make sure that your your home planet uh, doesn't fall into a wall. So. Um, what can we look at now? Okay, so let's let's take a look at planets. Let's kind of take a look at um, what this kind of does. So we have total revenue. There's actually a plug in this. It's, it's not actually correct, but it's actually you know 7.99. There's something going on here, but you see that your your different people up the chain get a certain amount. Actually, let's go to another planet to show that. So we have five BC. Um, that's the expected revenue for this year. Um, there is no trade going on. And I'll kind of explain trade, uh, um, retail, uh, another time. Uh, and there's no ingoing or outgoing uh, trades. As you can see, myself as the emperor, I get four billion credits, and then my uh, domestic prime gets a cut, a very small cut, three uh, percent. My provincial governor gets ten percent. But again, since it's such a small cut, and I get seventy-five percent, I pretty much get all that. There's some rounding here; they get like a percentage. But um, no trade going on, no trade hubs, so they cannot export uh, or import. Build points. Now this is kind of important. This shows what this governor, I'm sorry, this viceroy has chosen to focus on. So they're focused on admin, which is not unusual because Hawkstorm is my uh, my uh, house and it focuses on admin. We're a proud family. Uh, the admin is uh, our specialty. Now you'll actually be able to choose that in a later version. You'll be able to set your um, competencies, your tradition amount. So for right now, it defaults to admin. So that's kind of what they're going to choose. Uh, if I take a look at this person, um, they have low empathy, so they're going to kind of do what's best for them, uh, which is why they're focusing on admin. Another reason, because hey, the more admin, the more powerful I am. Uh, low honor, uh, which means they're going to kind of go against house wishes, and they have low charm. This is not a great viceroy. Um, this is someone that's probably going to kind of get people away. In fact, let's take a look at some things. Let's look at, so we already lost someone. Um, we had 10 come and 11 leave. Um, so we had a net migration of negative one. 
uh, now this shows where the different types of hops go you can look at this any turn to see where they're going so that means we had one um, engineer go to Tian Tang and we had four miners and five engineers I'm sorry they come they came here from there um, so we gained six miners but then we lost six going to other planets um, now sometimes they'll kind of swap because there are different cultures um, you'll see here the desirability by pop now this does not include jobs um, this is just the base desirability. So since this governor is of my house, which is known for its admin and we're building admin, um, the need for administrators is much higher. So if I'm an administrator looking for work, pop, then I'm probably going to want to go here first. But do we even have any admin jobs? Well, good question. So we have no admin facilities, which we're an established colony. We're not a, we're not a base of operations. So this viceroy decided, hey, let's do something about that. So 32% of all the build points are going towards um, administrative levels. As you can see this bar here, it's about halfway done. Um, they're building farms, but it's not a priority, which you can see, even though we're losing food, since they are low um, empathy, they're not gonna care so much about you know things like food and water and basic uh, needs of the people. Um, power, uh, also important because they're losing a lot of power. Uh, but again, not so much for the people, more to make sure that they have their own, they can fuel their own machines and whatnot. So, over here, by the way, and there's just so much to show. I'm kind of just going around here. Um, there's a lot since the last uh, video to kind of show. Now, these percentages, this shows the capabilities uh, and the, the multipliers based on the Viceroy's house and also the system governor uh, and the province governor. This shows how good they are. So, because this person is a very high intelligence, um, they are much more able to basically teach their planet what they're good at, which their house, my house again, is Hawkstorm, which has an affinity for admin. So you can see this admin multiplier is very high. Um, so the average skill level is going to increase over time. So my administrators are going to get better, and that's going to allow them to pump out more admin than if they were on another world with a, with a viceroy who was, say, good at mining and had a very low admin. So this is a way to build up the plants the way you want. It's all about putting the right people in place. And that is the key, ladies and gentlemen, finding the right people to indirectly manage your plants. They all have different skills. If I want a, um, if I want to build this planet up into a uh, powerhouse, an admin powerhouse, this may not be the right person. She's super smart, but I keep losing people. That's not going to be the way to go. So this is one of those trade-offs. Plus, if I, if I fire her, she's going to be pissed off at me. She may even defect to another house, which is another character that I lose. Um, so there's always trade-offs. So remember, the ultimate goal here is to keep your popular support high and to not get overthrown or to lose house support to a point where there's a civil war. So, you know, I, I need to build my empire. I need to build these stocks. I need to create relationships with characters who are high value so that they can uh, take over planets and systems and provinces that will bring me more, um, you know, uh, money and, and, and power. So this is kind of the heart of the game as it stands right now. Now when the AI is put in, which will start in the next um, system or the next uh, update, that's gonna be very important. But right now, I'm gonna go ahead and sack this person. I'm just gonna kind of show you what it looks like. I'll go to hostile actions, remove from post. Now I cannot remove a post of someone that's, that the holding is not mine. You can see this is my holding, um, but if it was not mine, I could not remove them. Okay, because that's enough that the house owns that, that basically. So I'm going to go ahead and remove them. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and pick someone that's going to take it over. Now, again, if they're not going to work for me, then I, they won't see them here. So I've got a courtier who's got a, a two admin, which is okay. He's got high charm and he's got low, I'm sorry, low charm, but high empathy and high intelligence. Hmm. That's not, may not be a bad choice. Um, two, average intelligence, low empathy, but high charm. So he's kind of a average politician type. Uh, plus he's a technophobe. Oh, and he's a backstab. Oh, that's not good. That's going to come into play when the Intel and the AI system comes into play. Uh, this guy is more likely than not to turn on me and give the planet to someone else. So uh, for sake of what I would do if the game were fully formed, I'm not going to choose him. Huh. Psychopath. Well, she's got one admin ability. She's smart, but she is low empathy and average charm, and she's a psychopath. Nope. 
And, oh, she's got a great admin, a three admin. She's intelligent. She's got average empathy and low charm. Well, I could probably live with the charm. And she's a fast learner, which is great. Because that means she's going to, uh, her admin skill is going to go up and she's going to be able to uh, um, improve her internal statistics more. So I'm going to go ahead and go with her. Oh, and she hates me. Uh, this is called Prey. If I click on her, uh, I'm going to go ahead and add her on there. Um, so now you see she's, she's there. Um, okay, so now of course she hates me because I've just removed her. Now, I, I had another option. I could have actually gone, um, and I'll show you here, um, I could have simply designated her for assignment. So what this does is it basically says, I need, to, I need to, to remove you, but I have another plan for you. And within three months, I'm going to put you somewhere equal, equal to or better than where you were at. So I'm going to put you as a viceroy or I'll put you as a governor. Um, or obviously a prime, although that would probably be silly. And, but if I don't do that, then they're going to be very furious with me and, and probably issue a challenge. So, uh, But I chose not to do that in this case. So now you see, now she's a different house. So now you see how, remember this was like 2 point something? So now it's 1.11. Because they don't specialize, Igajora Alti doesn't specialize in that. They specialize in farming and somewhat in, um, uh, in this, but mainly they're high tech. So this is actually not correct. This should actually be 80. Uh, I'll have to fix that. Um, but unfortunately, since I don't have academies in the uh, reform system in yet, it's not going to help me very much. But I'm just trying to kind of show you some of the different, um, I guess, the, the mechanics and how they kind of interplay. So you see that my now her build plans changed too. See, now it's high tech. Well, because she's from a plan that's high tech. And because she has average empathy, which is better than the previous one, um, she is going to build uh, almost as many farms, although she's going to focus hugely on energy because you need energy to build all these high-tech um, uh, academies and, 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 and uh, whatnot. So um, now you see here, these are called my fluxmen. These are the people that provide the energy. Wow, this went up to 2.76. Remember, this is like point something. So this is kind of her, her specialty is getting um, this energy out of that. So um, hopefully... That's going to lead more Fluxmen. So now when I go to my demographics, wrong one, now you see that Fluxmen are hugely in demand. So you see, hopefully you can see that by changing the Viceroy and to a lesser extent your governors, you're affecting what kind of pops come to your planet. So you're pulling people towards that planet um, when you build new colonies. That's another way that you can pull people from one planet to another. Uh, it's kind of a sneaky way of, of doing something. If I have a planet that I don't want to necessarily take away from a, a, a house, which I can, I can take away a, a holding. I'll actually show you that here in a second. Um, so let me go to, you know, I don't think I have a planet that actually, okay, here we go, Companion. So this system is, is held by uh, Milok. So I could take this entire system. I could go into Hostile Actions. Nope, wrong one. Assignment action. Nope, house action. That's right. It's new. I can remove this holding. I can take this whole holding away um, from Milok and uh, make it mine, which I'm going to do just to kind of show what happens. So before I do that, notice my fear and love levels. My public order. Anything above 70 is pretty good. Uh, anything above 90 is like phenomenal. It means basically it's like peace on earth. Um, the lower this gets, the more likely it is for there to be revolts or um, loss of production and other bad things happening. So um, so right now, there's no fear. Uh, my love level is at 49%, so it dropped a little bit. But let's see what happens when I do that now. First of all, I'll take away, so you see the cultures. Gilded World, 60% here, 51% Gilded Worlds. Well, Milak, um is, is uh, a mercantile culture. So... They're not going to be as affected directly, uh, but since I don't have a Gilded Worlds culture, they're going to be more upset. So let's go ahead and just show you what happens. House actions, remove holding from house. I must insist that we return to Imperial Hand. Will you obey? I have it set so that we'll do it no matter what, basically for purposes, but in the game itself that we ship, they may not do it, in which case you'll have to either go to war or find another way to reduce the power. All right. Uh, no, however, their house never forgets. I've served you my entire life, and this is the knife I get. I will get my revenge. Ha ha ha. So, now it belongs to us. So, now when we go back to here, now we've got quite a bit of fear because you know, uh, taking uh, property by fiat is, is not super loved among the populace. So, you see, my popular support dropped immediately. My power increased because now I have a new holding. Hey, I got a whole system now. Um, but more people fear me 
um, you know, quite a few more still love me. I still have 44% popular love support versus fear, uh, but the, the gap is decreasing. So and if this number ever gets higher than this number, so basically what that means is on this planet, I rule by fear. So um, I can lose power if I don't continue to do things that um, basically scare the pot. They're only doing things for me because they're afraid of me, not because they love me. Uh, and it's a lot, I'll, I'll tell you this, it's a lot uh, more expensive to make people happy than it is to bring them in line. And that's another decision that you'll have to make depending on the projects and actions that you take. So, um, all right. So, obviously, um, he's pretty unhappy at this point. Uh, Vendetta, yeah, he's, hey, you took my, my thing. They're still in charge, but you basically socked it to their house. So when I go to Melox, see now they're at 148, and they're going to drop even more. This calculates every turn. So they're probably going to drop below New Sharp. So if I want to stick it to Melox, I just did that. But of course, now I, I, I run the risk of their people plotting against me, possibly, um, when their AI comes into play, um, you know, maybe even going to war with me to get the planet back or, or the system back. Um, so there's a lot just involved in the decisions you make. It's not just a matter of taking the planet. Oh, okay, we're done. Um, that will come more into play as we add more to to that. So let's go ahead, before we end this, uh, I know we're getting close to an hour. Let's go ahead and uh, show you how to build that, what we were talking about. Um, so we're going to go build a planet. So now, now we have the options because now we have a uh, logistical presence there. So we're going to go ahead and colonize the planet. And now, because it does belong to a province, I'm going to have the ability to pull people from it. A lot of times when you colonize, especially when you're colonizing a new um, um, constellation. It's very, very takes quite a while because you don't have any kind of support out there. Now you can claim a system, um, but it doesn't uh, just for admin purposes. Uh, but it doesn't actually get you any uh, infrastructure or anything like that. So uh, let's just kind of quickly go through here. Um, oh, of interest because I remember I wanted to tag them. So they got 115. Let's go ahead and give Sophia. Let's go ahead and give her the administrator part. And then let's go ahead and look at my admin. Um, greater than zero, so we have back to Furia. Um, yeah, I think, but see, she has no money. So I'll use her for the admin. But you see, it takes 300 to colonize a planet. That's a lot. Look how much energy it takes, 5,000. That's why you don't want to just colonize every planet that you see. Um, it's going to make your people very happy. It's going to increase your base of power. Um, if you colonize a planet inside another uh, house's uh, system holding, that planet will actually belong to that house. So in effect, you're gifting them that that planet. So something else you have to think about. They'll obviously be happier, but you'll be increasing their power as well, and you'll have limited control over the planet. So um, I guess we'll go with her. Um, so I guess we'll have to... Uh, we've already opened up. Let's see the minor houses. I don't think they're controlling anything, but no, they're not. Let's go to the Empire. So, and again, you see how low these numbers are, because now we're getting outside of the... Uh, of the uh, province, so I guess we'll give it back to the system governor here. Um, now, now you see how low a lot of these numbers are. The planet of Viceroy. When I take system governors, they're taking their admin from their respective plants. When I take a provincial governor and put them on a project, they're taking all the admin from their systems, which are taking it from their plants. So it's kind of a top-down thing. So I get a lot of bang for my buck with her as a system governor. But um, and obviously, you see the province governor. We talked about that earlier. They're not going to help because they hate me. So we already talked about um, if I wanted to plan ahead, I probably needed to kind of improve their uh, relationship, which I probably should have done. But again, I'm kind of uh, knocking around here. So there's no way I'm going to finish this in time. So I'm going to leave it at three turns. So I'm going to go ahead and just execute. Let's see if there's anyone else that I want to give. I'll give my wife a bone. I'll give her some power. So now she's going to get 16 power. Um, Marcus will get 24. Actually, let's go ahead and, let's go ahead and tag her. Uh, and then let's go ahead and execute. So now that's in the queue. Um, so I've got two AP. Um, let's just for the let me just show you something here, um, how you can help. So right now this person does not want to help me. Um, she considers herself prey because she has low power relative to me. Um, but we do not get along. So let's see. We have these different actions that you can do. Uh, I can give a speech. I can express support. I can give a gift. Um, so let's go ahead and just give a speech. Um, so I gave my speech, and of course this has differs depending on some internal characteristics. I'm still pray, but my trust went up a little bit. So if I continue to do this, uh, eventually I will. Uh, let's give her a gift too, just just for the heck of it. Um, 
uh, and I need to finish writing the uh, script for this. So that also went up a little bit. So um, this is just kind of ways to, but see now I can't, I'm out of action points and now I can't do any more actions. So, so we're done here. Let's go ahead and end the turn. You'll see the amount of turns this will kind of fill in. Um, what I'm going to do now before we kind of end this part, I'm going to kind of fast forward to show you what the effects of colonizing a planet and how it affects um, uh, migration. Because one way of pulling people from a planet is provide, providing a new opportunity uh, at another planet. So, um, all right. So turns are pretty good. You know, turns only take about 20 to 30 seconds to process, which is pretty good. Now, that's going to go up when the AI comes into play. Um, all right, let's go ahead and do one more. So this is actually over half full. Now the estimates to turn, it's kind of an estimate. There's a little bit of noise built in. So when it says three turns estimate, it may be two, it may be four, it may be five. It won't be 20, but it's not an exact thing. And that's just kind of another way of, um, I'm not a big fan of exact numbers in this game. So now you notice, see my energy is down to just over 11,000. I'm still losing. I've got to find a way uh, to start bringing in some energy pretty soon, which is going to be either through the trade network, uh, through negotiating with the house, um, through um, which is what I'm doing here. I'm actually going ahead and I've uh, mined this planet. So now you see Emerald. Huh. So they come in. The public water is very low to always start with because you're bringing people in. They're already kind of disaffected, um, so they're looking for a new place to go. Um, so let's kind of take a look here. We've got... Uh, Okay. Nope, nope. Yeah, okay. So 17 million. So we've got 15 farmers have come, two miners, which I really need more miners, um, which is, uh, oh, they built admin. Okay, so what's happened is I put someone in charge who's focused on admin. And I've, there's someone here, and they hate my guts. Oh, look, it's our friend Mandragora that I had kicked to the curb. You remember her. So, I don't want her as part of this, so I'm going to kick her to the curb again. Um, I'm going to remove her from post, and at this point, she would probably go to war with me, probably start a coalition at some point. I want to get someone that's a minor. So, I've got a courtier, who's from Milak, he's got two admin, he's got a little bit of money, um, he's not very smart, but he is reasonably... Uh, reasonable amount of charm and a reasonable amount of empathy so and he's not a friend of mine so this will be a nice little gift for him so I'm just just for the sake of just doing this I'm gonna go ahead and um, put him in charge and okay so they say now we're now we're allies so um, so now my mining has gone up somewhat because he's not very smart he's not gonna have a, a huge effect on that I probably could have picked someone better but I'm trying to just kind of get through this because there's so much to show so, so when I look at next turn, next turn, you're going to see the migration, migration. and you'll see this you'll population. See you may see it increase, increase, but it's pulling, it's pulling from, from other planets. planets. All right, so now you see how this kind of went up. So now I've got 15 farms. I've got 16 miners. They're still set, I'm 16 farmers. They're still settling in, so they're not fully employed yet. It takes a few months to kind of get everything settled in. Um, I've got 12 um, mines, but I've only got two miners, and only one of which is actually employed currently. So that's going to take a little while to settle in, but it's, as you see, I'm already starting to have a surplus on uh, minerals. Um, so when I go here to migration, so no one actually came in, but you see now miners. It's all these numbers are very high because it's a new planet anyway, but miners especially. So that's kind of cool. So um, if I zoom out, see, I don't have a whole lot of miners. Do I have any miners that need work? See, I've got 13 pops. And I've only got nine mines, so I've got a few miners that could probably use some work. Um, problem is, I don't have enough mines either, so I'm gonna have to build more mines. You see, now their focus is mines. I can make them change their focus. If I go to assignment actions, I can uh, improve the sector. I can actually change their mines for them. But he's doing what I want, so I don't have to spend AP on it. Um, if I want him to initiate specific populations, like say, hey, we really need more miners. We really need more miners. So. Uh, click on miners, and I got to kind of clean that up a little bit. But uh, you'll see now that when we go to migration, now you'll see this is in green, which means we're putting a focus on. We're actually spending some money to do that. So that's going to be uh, take out some of the uh, uh, revenue, which actually the revenue is zero because it's such a small planet. Um, but it took out a portion of that. So 
Hopefully, let's see what happens next turn. And see, and see there's so many ways. I mean, you only have two AP. I've spent literally a year focusing on like one character, building them up, um, working on one planet, uh, seeing how to get kind of bring people over, um, kind of manipulating. You know, I can build a mining station, and that would have brought a lot of miners. But this planet, because it has such a low uh, admin, I'm sorry, low uh, bio, it's going to be kind of a tough sell. If it had a higher bio, it would have had a better chance. So I can terraform this planet. Um, but I can only terraform it when it's empty because of the type of terraforming, and that's an actual project. Um, and that's through, uh, um, I could, but I, you know, uh, I can't do it because it's, it's, uh, it's, if it was un, um, if it didn't have any pops on it and it was uninhabited, then I could terraform it and I could bring the, uh, the, uh, bio up. But unfortunately, I've already put people on it. So, um, pretty much everything's stable right now. Um, my public order is increasing a little bit. Uh, my love's increasing a little bit because I'm doing good things. You see, my popular support is dropping very slightly. It's, it's still pretty high, but it's not great. So as this drops, um, there are bonuses that you get for people going along with what you're doing in actions, making them do what you want them to do. So as this starts to drop, they start to see, oh, hmm, they don't have the backing of the people, and they become a little more belligerent. Um, that kind of affects their uh, decisions. Of course, your power also is, is by far the most important, especially if you're uh, ruling by fear, but this is also an important part. So, all right, well, I've shown you guys quite a bit. Um, not everything by far, but it's enough to kind of get an idea of the gameplay and kind of the flow and how it works. There's still a lot more to show, uh, which I will do another video shortly, but hopefully you get an idea of how everything works. And um, I've had a lot of fun uh, going over this with you, and I've hoped you've stayed through this. It's over an hour long now, um, but uh, I'll probably release another video in a week or so uh, with a few more changes. Um, but I really look forward to seeing what you can do with your empire and seeing how high you can get your popular support. And if you have any questions, feel free to post them on the, um, on the YouTube site. Thank you guys very much for playing along. Have a great day.